ever wonder what it takes to kickstart your entrepreneurial journey? Well, I've been asked countless times about how did you get started and what did you wish you knew when you were just starting out? So in this video, I'm going to share all the things that I wish someone had told me when I was taking my leap from being a corporate employee to becoming an entrepreneur, all the mistakes that I made, but also the key essential lessons in the last decade that have helped me to build a meaningful business that gives me the life I want. Stay tuned. I'm Lydia Lee. I'm the work reinvention coach and solopreneur strategist at Screw the Cubicle. In the last decade, I've been helping budding and growing entrepreneurs to create meaningful work and businesses that fit the lifestyles that they want. If you are new to this channel, you may want to hit the subscribe and the notification bell button so that you are the first to know anytime I drop a video here every single month. Excitement can make you jump headfirst into an idea, but it's so important to pause to validate. It's something that I learned the hard way when I first started marketing my coaching services and then crickets, nobody was coming to buy them because I was sort of hoping on just a prayer that people would find me that hopefully I created the right thing for them and then they would buy me and give me their money. <laughs> and that wasn't the case. If I was to start over today, I would certainly be spending a lot more time understanding who I was serving, what were the problems I was truly solving for this group of people, and how to converse with them in a way that's going to resonate with their hearts and their minds. Validating my offers and ideas before launching was such a game changer for my business. It is part of the master framework that I coach my new clients that are also launching their startup businesses to do this step properly so that they know when they do launch, they really truly have done the groundwork to market to the right people, create the right product for the right people, and really knowing how to articulate the value of that work so that their work can sell more easily. So it starts with what I call conversational research. Conversational research was something that I never did in the beginning of my business, but do it every single year. It's almost the 10th year anniversary of my business this year. It's something that is part of my practice of having my finger on the pulse in my industry and to stop guessing about what people want and actually start asking them how I can help and what's really behind the problem that they're trying to solve for themselves. Now, conversational research is not just researching the internet and seeing what your competitors are offering, but it's actually gathering a small group of people that you can have some real human conversations with because people talk about their problems a lot more accurately and clearly more than just in a survey or in a comments field in a Facebook group, for example, than in a conversation that they're going to be speaking to you on, right? That is actually the real raw time that they're going to start spilling their guts about what keeps them up at night, what are they really looking to achieve and how they want to get there. That conversation is so revealing about what are the solutions you should be creating to support them on these tiny steps that will help them get to the mountain of achievement because it's never a one-step thing to help your clients with their problems. So if you haven't been collaborating with people that you want to help to create the right solutions for them, that is the place that I would really start. The next part of validating idea after research is once people have come to you to support you on figuring out what are the steps that are necessary to help them go from A to B in their journey, you would have created a framework, right, for this offer. And again, we don't want to hope on a prayer that this journey, this experience, this step-by-step -step framework you've created is going to work. We want to road test that offer. We want to road test that roadmap <laughs> in order to know that you can impact people's results. You know exactly what it feels like to work with people. It's kind of what I call a self-made internship, right? As adults, we've lost the art of internship, but it's so important to actually do the work, do a round of beta with that work before you launch so that it won't be your first rodeo working with clients later on when you launch the paid product. Now, what's going to be beneficial in the validation stage of a business is really working with people, getting some experience and getting some social proof and early testimonials for your work. And that is truly what's going to help build the confidence you need to not only launch your business, but really know that what you created out there in the marketplace is valued and validated by other people too. 
The next thing I would do differently is to mirror the right mentors. Earlier on in my entrepreneurial journey, I was really hungry for success. And I thought the way to get there was to emulate the most successful online entrepreneurs I saw out there. But I wasn't paying attention to their values and business styles. And that resulted in me doing a lot of activities in my business that didn't feel right for me. And it wasn't who I wanted to become as a business owner. If I were to start again, I would be more discerning about who I considered were my mentors. It's not about following just the most successful entrepreneurs, but finding the individuals that reflect your values, respect the same style of working, and have similar visions for the life and work you dream to have. Those are the mentors that are worth following because they're not just only successful in business, they are successful in a way that resonates with you. And as we're talking about having the right people around you, one of the things that I wish I prioritized a little bit more when I was first starting out was to build a strong network from the start. Solopreneurship and entrepreneurship isn't a solo journey. We need meaningful relationships and we need community to help us get from where we are to where we want to go. And there's something really beautiful and magical that happens when you're around like-minded people that are also focusing their time and energy on a similar goal, whether it's quitting your job, starting a meaningful business, or having more lifestyle freedom. When you're around people that share those values and share that mission, it really just creates that motivation and inspiration for you to get there. And most importantly, it normalizes the thing you want because everyone around you also wants it. I remember when I was first transitioning from leaving my job to entrepreneurship, none of my friends were doing that. I didn't know anyone in my vicinity at the time that was taking the same leap. So it became very scary. It felt like I was a lone wolf. People thought I was having a midlife crisis a little too early. <laughs> and it wasn't until I found my people the next, for my next chapter of my work life that I really started to feel that, hey, I'm not alone in wanting this, that it's okay to want this. And not only that, I have a support system that can get me there. When you are starting a business for the first time, there will be a lot of skills, knowledge, education that you're going to need to learn, and you can't be the only one that can support yourself with it. I find that when you have a great network of people around you, you're going to be able to fill the gaps of certain skill sets that you're not good at and be able to ask for support and get your business launched a lot faster than doing it alone. Finally, here's something that we overlook when we're first getting started. We try to fit ourselves into the business, then shaping the business to fit who we naturally are. And that really happened to me too in the beginning of my entrepreneurship journey, taking on tasks, roles, strategies that didn't really fit my strengths or my personality type. And that resulted in me feeling like a bit of like a square peg trying to fit into a round hole. It just didn't work. After suffering a business burnout several years ago, it really taught me the power of intentionally designing my business to fit me and the life that I really want. So if I was to start over again, I would make sure that I was designing my business to suit my zone of genius right from the get-go. It's not about believing that we have to do all the things to be successful, but really consciously choosing the activities and strategies that really align with your strengths, your personality type, and also your lifestyle choices. That's what's helped me to create boundaries in my work, to create how I want to work in my business, how I want to show up for it, and what I offer and who I work with, all the details that make the ingredients of a business really personalized to me, right, feel joyful so that I feel motivated to show up for work every single day. And my business gives back to me. It helps me to live the life I want and not for me to sacrifice my life just to run a business. So you, the mission really here is to build a business, to thrive in it, not just to survive. Now I would love to hear from you. What was your biggest takeaway or aha moment from this video? And if you have a story to share about your journey from going from employee to entrepreneur, let us know in the comments below as well. I read every single comment on this channel. And if you would love to continue this journey of getting more support in launching the business of your dreams, there's two ways that you can get started next. You can take my free quiz that's gonna help you discover the right business to start based on your personality type, 
Or the second step is to go and watch my workshop called The Four Keys to Launch a Business You Love, where I break down the essential framework of going from ideation to launching a meaningful business. I hope you join me there. Thank you so much for being here today. I'll see you in the next video.